EV chargers out of service. This was a site that haunted EV owners who used the Mass Pike for much of the last year. And those chargers are now being replaced. But real charging gaps are a problem coast to coast. Our chief meteorologist Eric Fisher joins us now. So Eric, I know this investigation is helping to kick off this new initiative we're doing with CBS News. Yeah, you know, for decades now, the WBZ weather team has been really a leader across the country in educating and informing our viewers about the change in climate, putting it all in context. You've seen our team travel from mountaintops to seashore, all in an effort to really further the cause of bettering our planet and just increasing you know, the knowledge of what's been happening here in our local climate. Now, today we have some exciting news. WBZ is joining forces with CBS News and all of its sister stations under a new umbrella called Climate Watch. Now, this will allow us to continue all the great work we've done under the Eye on Earth brand, but with a renewed commitment in a wider range of resources, tell stories really across the country and the world. Now, we have a lot planned for 2024, and that starts today with a closer look at the challenge to keep electric vehicles charged. Now, sales of EVs, they keep climbing, but as CBS's David Schechter tells us, the creation of new charging stations is not keeping pace. When you're in California doing a story about electric cars, you gotta rent an electric car, go for a cruise. <laughs> 10 miles an hour on the freeway. Not exactly what I had in mind. Unlike the speed of traffic in Los Angeles, the sale of electric vehicles in the US is really moving. Last year, Americans bought 1.4 million of them. More electric vehicles means fewer greenhouse gas emissions that warm our planet. But there's a downside. There are not enough publicly available electric chargers to juice all those cars up. So I've got an app. I'm gonna find us a charger. Okay. That means in California, the state with the most EVs, finding a charger that's working and also available Someone's in it. can be a challenge. They're all in use. It's definitely blocked. There are no chargers here. One way to address the EV charging gap is better maintenance of the chargers we do have. The charger that you thought you were gonna to use to refuel your vehicle is actually inoperable. So one of the- That's a problem. That's a problem, <laughs> right? That's a, that's a huge problem. Walter Thorne is with a small company called Charger Help. They train workers to service a variety of charging equipment owned by different companies. And frequently, techs discover that a charger is out of order before the charging company even does. The pain is real. JD Power found 35% of EV drivers in Miami had visited a charger where they were unable to actually charge. In Denver and Dallas, that number was 29%. And other research found 28% of the chargers in the San Francisco Bay Area did not function properly. Charger Help collaborated with the federal government in developing a new standard that says chargers will have to work 97% of the time. We know that reliable charging infrastructure is a critical piece of a successful transition. Right there, you see the sign? I'm on the map, but it's not on the map. Losing a little bit of patience right now? Two years ago, federal lawmakers approved $5 billion to spur the construction of a national network of 500,000 publicly available electric charging ports by 2030. That would help fill the gap. But since the law passed, there's been a lot of plans, but few chargers. Hey, how's it going? Hi, how are you? Melissa Lott is an energy policy expert at Columbia University. So you can't just put a charger anywhere. You have to pick certain places and make sure the infrastructure behind it, all the stuff that's invisible to us on the day-to-day -day, is actually there and ready to go. And that takes time. To keep up with growing EV sales, experts estimate, in addition to all the private chargers at homes and offices, the U.S. will need 1.2 million publicly accessible chargers by 2030. Today, there are about 160,000, which means we'll have to build the equivalent of what we have right now every year for the next six years. Lot says when it comes to climate change, there is a lot riding on quickly building out a national charging network. The slower we go, the bigger the impacts of climate change that we're gonna see. The city of Los Angeles is taking a novel approach to closing the charging gap, installing chargers on light poles on city streets because the electric infrastructure, it's already there. 
at most will have to change fuses or do um, structural retrofits. Miguel Sangalong is the director of LA's Bureau of Street Lighting. So far, his team has installed about 725 light pole chargers and says the city's street lights can support a total of three or 4,000 more. We're gonna be that public option for people to have access to it on the right of way for everyone. I think we should go back over there. Charger. I mean, we're charging, baby. So what does all this mean for Massachusetts? Well, a national study says the state needs about 23,000 new public chargers by 2030, and that would mean installing at least 3,000 new chargers every year to stay on target and meet demand. As we've seen, closing a charging gap like that will take lots of solutions, big and small. I'm David Schechter, CBS News.